Father Sabrino, thank you very much for being here with us. Okay. Many years ago, right after the deaths of your brothers and Elba and Selena in El Salvador, I had the gift of meeting you briefly in Washington. Mm -hmm. At that time, amazingly, you spoke about hope. You've also described your brothers as men who knew joy. Mm -hmm. Can you say a little bit about that? Yeah. What did you mean? Well, uh, that happened 19 years ago. I don't remember exactly. So many things happened those days uh, to me and to all of us. But I think what I meant when I said that um, I had hope basically is that, uh, well, life, history uh, goes on and that the, uh, the death of the Jesuits and so many others, Julián and Selena, did not stop uh, going on. Not only that, but uh, somehow uh, it moved me to go on. Uh, and so not to fall into despair, uh, into tragedy, uh, but something else. Now, when I think now, I may have written on that. The source of hope is love. So hope is not, in my understanding of the concept, it's not uh, a wish. Uh, I have wish, uh, and I'm, uh, I'm certain it will happen. Uh, uh, when you see love, uh, people loving each other, then somehow uh, important things emerge from us human beings. And one of them is hope. Uh, is that irrational or whatever you want to call it? Uh, that to me is important. And I remember when I was a student in Germany so four years ago, um, reading uh, Jürgen Moltmann. He was, uh, in those days, the famous theology of, theologian of hope. Mm -hmm. And he wrote uh, something like this. Not every life is a source of hope. No. But certainly the life of Jesus of Nazareth, who out of love uh, carry on his shoulders uh, the cross uh, for the poor. Well, that's probably what I felt. Uh, mm -hmm. is, uh, but up to the present day, uh, you know, well, here, although here we are celebrating and remembering many things. But I feel in the environment, well, I feel several things. Uh, on the one hand, which is, uh, well, it's absolutely understandable and, and fine and nice. Let's protest against uh, the school or whatever. I, I do too. Huh? But it's not, that's not the only thing. Mm. I we don't, we don't live only out of protesting, although... Uh, what do we live out from? And I think it's whatever, love. Now the same, not the same, something parallel I would like to say about uh, my, the Jesuits, they were men of joy. Why did I say that? Well, probably, again, since those days, uh, well, the tragedy and the drama uh, was so visible, uh, I wanted to say, well, we, we don't have to spend, I mean, we don't have to, we are not condemned to spend our lives in, in sorrow, uh, mourning, uh, but also enjoy, and then uh, probably I said, those people enjoyed life. Now, enjoying life doesn't mean to have fun, that's something else. Uh, but the things make sense. Uh, that working hard uh, makes sense. And that's the life of so many, many poor people in El Salvador makes absolute sense, willing to live. Uh, is that joy, whatever you want to put mm -hmm. it? Uh? Certainly it's not, obviously, it's not the joy out of which the entertainment industry makes money. That's something else. Huh? But there is more than sorrow to life. Uh, probably that's what they meant. Mm, thank you. Yeah. Pax Christi has presence in Pax Christi members in many countries of the world, mm -hmm. like the Democratic Republic of the Congo, where the yeah. Yeah. The reality is yeah. so violent, or Haiti, yeah. where poverty yeah. is so yeah. challenging. What word of hope would you have for yeah. uh, people living in those situations? Well, uh, let me 
as far as uh, I know El Salvador, you know, Honduras, Guatemala, and maybe, maybe I have a word to say to those people. But when I think of Haiti and certainly Congo, what comes to my mind is not so much what will I say to them, but what will they say to me, uh, really. Um, especially for many reasons, Congo, Congo. Uh, it's a country which is, has been and still is unknown. The tragedies are uh, awful. And I got to know a little bit of Congo through sisters, huh? mm -hmm. uh, so religious women, who had been working there. Some of them at uh, the borders with, I think it's Rwanda, in uh, Bukavu, uh, where in a few days, maybe 300,000 um, immigrants uh, moved from Rwanda to Congo. Uh, if my geography is wrong, yes, uh, you understand it. Now, listening to these uh, sisters in this case, first of all, I, you know, what do I have to say? Nothing. Uh, maybe contemplate that. Contemplate what is that. And watching it on television, and from what I had heard to these uh, uh, nuns, I wrote that what I saw is primordial sanctity. Uh, mm -hmm. What was that? I don't know. Uh, mm -hmm. I want to say something solemn. Uh, I have been confronted with something which is really, really deep, uh, primordial sanctity. They want to live, to survive. I say especially the woman uh, what, with two children, one on each hand, and the, the, what they had left of the, their homes on their heads. Uh. So, uh, again, I, I don't want to, obviously, to be irrespectful. Uh. Mm. I don't want to play with words when you see that. Uh, but somehow, somehow, these people give me what? Well, hope to go on uh, and courage. Or an invitation, an invitation to be a human. Uh, that's, of course, my way of saying things. Uh, I don't feel that they are mad at me. They could. Uh, me or the Belgians or the Europeans or, mm -hmm. you know, or the whole Catholic Church or the Society of Jesus or whatever. So people, all of us, those of us who take life for granted, uh, mm -hmm. maybe they could, uh, now you, are, uh, you still want to say something to us. You take life for granted. We don't. Well, maybe I interpret what I feel, uh, saying they accept us, they forgive us, so, of course, of course, the message, the message is, well, no message, that the real miracle happens, um, that life becomes a possibility, and, well, what can I say? Oh, yes, one thing. I learned, I learned, see, I was quite ignorant, like most of us, about Congo. I learned what coltan is, that uh, uh, raw material around which wars have developed. But I also learned that the Jesuit by the name of uh, uh, Christoph Munziwa, who was bishop, uh, was uh, bishop of Bukavu, and he acted like our bishop Romero in Bukavu. He wrote a letter denouncing, the same way Romero wrote a letter to President Carter, he wrote a letter, I don't know whether it was the United Nations or whatever, really, uh, well, angry, not out outwardly angry, but deeply angry that the world didn't pay, didn't do anything uh, to stop the cruelty, the poverty, uh, the immigration of hundreds of thousands of people. And then he was killed. No? So, uh, so I have a picture of uh, Munsi Irwa. I didn't know who he was. Uh. All I know, all I know again, that he was a man uh, who lived for others, and just looking at him it brings hope. Mm. Oh, yes. I want to give them back yeah. whatever they have given me of, you know, acceptance, forgiveness, hope. Uh, mm. That's what I would like to give back to them. Mm. Thank you.